This is session one of what I'm calling milk or solid food. It might sound a strange heading, but it's based on a passage in Hebrews 5, 11 to 14, which reads like this. We have much more to say about this, but it's hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by now you should be teachers, you need somebody to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, still being an infant, is not acquainted with the teachings of righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. The writer of this book was writing to Jewish Christians and his theme seems to be that they were not growing in their understanding of what it meant to be a Christian. In the passage we just read, he likens them to babies being bottle fed. They just want to be told over and over again of the basic things about Jesus, but they never want to grow. There's a danger for us, especially in Western culture, where there's a tradition of Christianity and it's comfortable being a Christian. The writer uses the picture of feeding a baby. A baby's given a bottle with milk. They need that milk to nourish them. The baby gets hungry. It wants the milk. The milk's easy to swallow and to digest. It requires very little effort on the baby's part. And when the baby's finished, of course, it feels quite satisfied until the next meal time. And unfortunately, there are many in the church today who are just like this. It's great if someone comes along with a whole lot of stuff that they've prepared. They're hungry, they enjoy what they're given, not hard to swallow, and gives a sense of satisfaction until the next Sunday when they'll be given another dose. We really have too many bottle-fed babies in the church. A person cannot stay living on the bottle. The body needs more and different foods to nourish it. And so we begin to introduce solid foods. But we still feed the baby. All the baby has to do is open its mouth and receive. Because this is where a child will begin to show what it likes and doesn't like. It's an important time to introduce foods that are good for a child. Maybe they may not be so keen on it, but they need to be introduced to these foods. So we do it wisely. We perhaps mix it with something that's a, a little more to their liking. The worst mistake a parent can make is to pander to the child's wishes and only give them what they want because children simply aren't wise enough to choose. It's got not good enough for us as Christians to choose the bits of scripture that we like and never taste any of the more difficult ones. There comes a time, of course, when a child learns to feed themselves. They start with a spoon and it's a pretty messy process. They don't actually prepare the meal, but they are learning to eat it. It can be a bit like that when a Christian starts to feed themselves with the harder bits of scripture. It can become quite a messy process, and yet it is something that we have to learn to do, just as a child has to learn to feed themselves. Growing to maturity should be the goal of every Christian. Jesus, draw me ever nearer as I labor through the storm. You have called me to this passage, and I'll follow though I'm warm. May this journey bring a blessing. Jesus, guide me 
through the tempest. Keep our spirit stayed in shore. When the midnight meets the morning, let me love you even more. May this journey bring a blessing. treasures of the trial within me as I go 